Well, hello there, friends, and welcome back to the Marley Bird YouTube channel and video two of the three in one hand warmer stitch along. In this video, we are going to begin working the hand and the thumb gusset of these mittens or fingerless mittens or convertible mittens, depending on which ones that you are making. By this point in the pattern, you should have completed your cuff and you're ready to carry on to the next step. If you have not started this pattern yet, don't worry it is not too late go ahead and grab that free pattern I've put a link in the video description box right down there below when you have your pattern grab your materials and get started with the cuff you can watch video one to help you out if you need that help and then once your cuff is complete join us back here and you'll be ready to jump in with this section so without further ado I'm gonna get started because I'm gonna work through as much as I possibly can to show you how to get this done so here we go all right, so here is my cuff. I made mine a little bit longer than four inches because this second pair I'm making, I wanted my cuff just a little bit longer. Um, I'm still on my size seven needles and I'm getting ready to switch over to my larger double pointed needles. Um, I used smaller needles for the cuff to make the ribbing a little bit more dense, a little bit tighter. So that's why um, you switch over to the larger needles at this point. So I'm going to grab my larger needles and all I will do is continue on working in the round on my double points and I will knit this full round. So I'm just going to knit onto my new needle. I don't have to do any sort of sliding the needles over or anything. I simply knit onto the new needles. So this couldn't be any easier. If you're using circulars, you can do the exact same thing. Just use a larger circular and carry on onto the larger circulars. Pretty easy stuff. You don't have to stress too much about it. You'll notice that this first round, I'm not doing any color changes yet either. I'm simply knitting around and I did that on purpose so that way you didn't have to worry about changing to a new needle size and worry about changing uh, colors at the same time. I just made it really simple so that you just knit all the way around. Now there are not that many stitches so this shouldn't take you too long. And it's in the following rounds that we're going to begin to work the stranded knitting portion of this mitten, which is actually quite simple. There is a chart and I you know do write in the pattern that you should check out the cart the chart you know proceed to the chart but honestly it's a really simple stitch pattern so we're going to work through um and if you don't want to look at the chart you actually would be all right but we're gonna we're gonna take a look at this okay so right here we have all of our needles now on our work we're with the larger needles and we continue on. So it's at this point that we wanna make sure we bring in our second color, so have it ready to go. Um, I think I'm gonna to have to pull this one from the outside unless I can get, nope, I'm just gonna pull from the outside because that's the way it is. So I'm gonna get myself some slack here. All right, so I have my second color ready to go because I'm going to jump in to my hand. And so reading the chart, what you'll notice is you will have two stitches starting with color B and then two stitches starting with color A and then two with B, two with A, two with B. And you continue on doing that, okay? So we're gonna jump in with that. So we start off with color B. So I'm gonna start and we're just going to knit. So I'm gonna take my new color, wrap around with my color B and off. It's that easy. Go into the next stitch, make sure I'm not using my tail, wrap with my color B, and off. Now with my color A, I will knit with my color A, but here is my first tip, you guys. Whether you're on circulars or if you're on double points, as I bring this color A from this back needle, from the needle that, I, that it's attached to, and I bring it over here, see how I naturally want to bring that really super close and tight because that's what I'm used to doing, right? Well, when you're doing color work, we want to make sure that we're able to keep that float, the distance between these stitches so that way it's not tight like that otherwise these will pucker we want to make sure we keep that float so what i do is as i transition from one needle to the next with the float i make sure after i complete that stitch and i break it off or not break it off let it jump off i make sure my float 
is a nice comfortable distance around those stitches. Does that make sense? Maybe around isn't the right word, but you know what I'm trying to say, right? I need to make sure that that float is not super tight. That's the biggest thing. I'm more concerned making sure that this stitch here is close to this first one here. And I wanna make sure that that float going from this first one all the way over here to this third one is a good distance. Sometimes I'll hold on to it to make sure it doesn't go anywhere or get any smaller and I'll do the next stitch. All right, once you do that, the the rest of the stitches it's just like any other float that you normally would do if you're doing stranded color work so i like to hold one color in each hand because it helps me control um, the placement and i will always make sure that i hold the same color in the same hand so i will always be holding my color b in my right hand and i will always be holding my color a in my my left hand i will come up and yarn over my needle and knit once again, just like I am careful about this float going from that stitch to that one, I'm careful from this float going from this stitch to that one, okay? So it's the same, the same idea. I just wanna make sure my floats are not too tight. If you get them too tight, especially as you're doing this sort of checkered pattern, it makes it so that the stitches will pucker and you don't want to do that, okay? It's very easy to do that also in this pattern. Just always make sure your stitches are a little bit spaced apart on your needle and then just make sure you are not knitting too tight. Now, as somebody who is naturally a tight knitter, this is something that I had to get used to. So those of you who are tight knitters, you're like, I don't know if I can do this. I promise you can. Okay, so we're gonna transition to this next one. So this first two stitches are with my color A for me. So I wanna make sure as I'm pulling this over, okay, I need to make sure that that float going from over there to over there is not too tight. All right, make sure it's it has some slack to it. And then I will have to do the same thing with my color B because it's going from this needle to over here. But just like before, if I make sure I have that float just nice and comfortable, it will be just fine. Now you'll remember I talked a little bit about using two circulars um, to help with the control of the floats between needles. Um, and you could do that as well, like you could use two circulars to help, but it's gonna be the same sort of struggle in making sure that your floats are not super tight as you go from one needle to the next. It's just, it's just the nature of the beast when you're working with these floats, okay? So what you will do is you will continue on working in the pattern, okay? And you will get all the way through round nine and it's on round nine that you oh can you see what I did right there I was talking and I, I made that one just a little bit too snug so I need to make sure it's a little bit loose when you get to round nine that's when we introduce the thumb gusset okay and the thumb gusset is the portion of the mitten that allows your thumb to actually fit into the mitten comfortably. Um, there are other types of thumbs that you could do. There are things called afterthought thumbs, but we, we, I <laughs> designed this mitten to have a thumb gusset and those gusset stitches will only be worked using color A. Now you might think to yourself, well, how am I gonna strand my color B across my color A when it comes time? Well, the answer is you, you won't. You're actually going to tuck your stitch into your color A as we're working along or weave it in. Um, and it will help carry along your color B so that way it will be in the correct position when you need to use it again. So what I'm gonna do in the interest of time, you can see I'm just going through this one round. We're gonna pretend that we are on a thumb gusset round on my next round here. And I'm going to show you how to get started with those thumb gusset stitches and what you need to do, okay? I do want you to notice I'm keeping my floats nice and comfortable and I'm being very careful about it. You wanna be very careful as you go around. So let's take a look. You can see all of my floats. They look like nice and neat. This one here looks a little bit snug, so I'll probably be a little bit more careful as I come around, but I do wanna make sure they're nice and comfortably spaced, okay? Alrighty then, can you see that? 
Okay, so we're gonna do a, a little pretend here, okay? So let's do like the Wayne's World, and we're gonna pretend that I'm on the thumb gusset round. I wanna make sure that you understand how you will work the thumb gusset and how to read the chart if you wanted to read the chart for the thumb gusset. Um, you, you really don't have to, it's really just as simple as increasing on stitches, but uh, we'll go over that, all right? So let's jump in to the thumb gusset. Let's all put on our imagination hat. Okay, first things first, the chart right here. So I know that since I printed this chart, they did the correction of the white blocks are actually color B and the the gray blocks are actually color A, okay? Um, and then you wanna make sure that would actually be with B. The, the reason that's important to note is because obviously we started with color B and if we wanna make sure that we're putting our thumb gusset stitches with our color A, they're gonna go right here. This is the other correction on the chart. This box here actually should be moved over one. So it should, it should be <laughs> um, right here. It should be the third stitch in. But regardless, it doesn't really matter in the sense that just, just keep watching, okay? <laughs> so we are pretending that I just finished round nine and that we're jumping into round 10. And what you'll notice in the written instructions, it tells you to work across those first two stitches with color B, and then it says to start the thumb gusset. So I'm gonna remember that this box is actually supposed to be right here, and I'm gonna jump over here because this is where the action is. So we have these two stitches right here. This is the, the, the box and the box. So those are my two stitches using color A. And I'm gonna work a knit front and back into those two stitches. And when I do that, now all of a sudden I'm gonna have four stitches. I'm also gonna place stitch markers in place so that way I can easily identify where those increases are worked. And then every other round, I will be working increases inside of those stitch markers until I get the set number of stitches I want for my thumb gusset. Now, the other thing that we're going to talk about as we're working through those thumb gusset stitches is how to weave in your color B as you're working across. So that way, um, if, we, if we want, because here's the deal, you don't want your color B to strand across more than three stitches. So as the stitches increase on the thumb gusset, we wanna make sure that we are weaving in or tucking in our color B so that way we can get it to the other side and continue using it. So I wanna make sure I show you how to do that, okay? Okay, so we have arrived at Imagination Station. I have my color A in my left hand, my color B in my right hand, and I will begin my thumb gusset stitches. So I start off knitting two stitches with my color B, just like I normally would, making sure that that strand right there between the joint is nice and comfortable. Now I want to go ahead and I'm going to place a marker. Okay, this isn't written in the pattern, but I want you to place a marker because it will help you immensely, I think. Now with color A in this next stitch, I'm gonna work a knit front and back. So I'm going to go into the front leg and knit it. Make sure your strand is not too tight. All right, always make sure your strand is not too tight. And then, oops, and then I wanna go into the back leg of that same stitch and knit it. So I've increased one stitch. I'm gonna do that again into the next stitch. So I knit into the front leg, swivel around, knit into the back leg and off. So now I have four stitches. I'm gonna go ahead and I will place another marker there. Just makes things so much easier. So what I have identified here with these markers, these four stitches here, they are beginning my thumb gusset. That's the start of my thumb. Now I want you to notice something. As I go to the next stitch, it's supposed to be um, with color B, right? Notice that that's gonna travel across four stitches there. Should we travel across four stitches? I'm gonna say, usually I would say no, but I'm gonna make an exception for this one time, just because it's tricky to weave in an end as you're doing a knit front and back. So I'm just going to be very careful as I'm going across those four stitches and make sure that my float is not going to cinch those up at all, okay? But that will be the only time I go across four stitches, all right? So that's gonna be that only time. Now I go ahead and carry on. So now we gotta get around. So that's it, that's all you're gonna do for this thumb gusset is you've just increased two stitches. Now we're gonna work around just in our normal pattern where we are going, oh, did I do that wrong? What did I do here? Yeah, I did that right, right here. <laughs> um, we're gonna work in our pattern where 
you end up doing two stitches in each color all the way around and you'll notice you do that for four rounds it's just the that's the that's the stitch pattern it's four stitches in four rounds or yeah four stitches in four rounds let's get here and make sure again always make sure that you are not pulling tight I'm gonna get around this round and then we'll talk at the end of the round okay so I have reached the end of my round get my yarn out of the way here and on this next round which would be round 11 I'm not going to work any increases I'm simply going to knit across these stitches but this time I will be tucking in my color B okay because I don't want to do another float that way again I only did the float across those four stitches on that first one because we worked those increases and it's just tricky to tuck in with the increases and so I'm making an exception there okay so we're gonna follow along in our pattern but this time we're gonna tuck in our color B when we get over there and we cross over a couple stitches so I want to make sure as I start off here I don't pull those stitches too tight did I do it right yep okay I think I'm good I will slip my marker I'll go ahead and I'll knit two stitches into my thumb gusset make sure make sure you're not pulling those tight so I'll knit two stitches in now here we go we're gonna weave in our our float so pay close attention here we take our needle and you go into the stitch just like you normally would knit it. Take your color B, wrap it around your needle just as if you were going to knit. Take your color A and wrap it around the needle just as you were going to knit. Take your color B and unwrap. That's it. You're left with color A on your needle and you pop off. Go ahead and continue on with your color A and see how now your color B has floated. It's floated across and it's just tucked in right there. So we don't have to, a really long float going across those stitches. So you slip your marker and you carry on with your pattern. So now we have our color B right there and it's ready to go. Isn't that neat? We'll do that again on the next round. So let's go ahead and work this round now that we've gotten through those stitches because the next round we're gonna increase again and then we are also going to tuck in our weave in our color B so that way we don't have that super long float again so I'll show you how to do it once again all right so I'm at the end of my round here so I would be on this would be round 12 okay so this is my no, uh, another increase round on my gusset so once again even without looking at the charge or looking at a pattern or looking at anything I know I'm going to increase in this first stitch on the um in the inside of my marker and this first stitch on the inside of my marker because every other round I'm increasing at my thumb gusset okay so here we go I am still I, I've only worked three rounds of this color sequence so I'm not changing my color sequence yet so everything is still just the same as far as colors so I'll start off still with my color B see what I mean you guys you got, you've got this I made this so that way you didn't have to think too difficult or too hard right so I've slipped my marker. I've got to knit front and back into this first one. So I knit front and I knit back. Again, make sure your flow is not too tight. Now I'll go ahead and I'm going to knit one. And now I'm going to tuck my stitch. So in this next one, I go in like to knit, take my color B, I will wrap it around my needle just like if I were going to knit. I take my color A, wrap it around my needle as if I was going to knit, and then I unwrap my color B. It's that easy. And then just finish knitting with your color A. Now my color B is just tucked over there and it's, it's out of the way. And now I'm at the last stitch before my marker, so I will knit front and back. Slip my marker and carry on with my pattern. Can you see that? See how easy that is to get across those thumb stitches? And I don't have a super long float, so it's not going to, um, like when I put my thumb in my mitten, it's not going to snag, it's not gonna do anything crazy there, okay? 
It's not going to do anything crazy. And what it's going to do also is it keeps all of my thumb stitches all in one color. Now, if you wanted to change your color up and, and do something unique in there, you absolutely could. I didn't write the pattern that way, so that way I could keep it as fairly easy as possible for all of you. Um, I tried to keep a pretty generic and easy stitch pattern that was pretty, um, uh, like, just wearable for anybody like it's not flowers it's not uh, anything like too masculine or too feminine it's just pretty basic it's just some some nice blocks the trickiest thing I think though uh, is the whole float process that I talked to you about but as long as you're making sure your floats are consistent and not too tight as you go around you'll be just fine. Now I'm also going to say that as you are getting all of your thumb gusset stitches and you're going to get as many stitches as are written in the pattern. Okay. So make sure you have your patterns. So you know, um, you can do fewer, you can do more, you, uh, you can do whatever you want for your mitten. Okay. You want to make sure that it fits your, your hand, your thumb. But as you get more stitches, you can tuck more than just one stitch across the row. So if you end up needing to tuck a couple times, you can do that too. So don't think that you can only do one um, tuck or one weave-in stitch across the row. You can do as many as you need to do to get the yarn to the other side. It's almost like it's a bad chicken joke, right? What is, what, how, why did the chicken cross the road? Um, sort of make some sort of a joke about how do you get the yarn from one side of the thumb gusset to the other. Um, and so you just weave in those yarns as you go, weave in the float. It's really not that super difficult at all. And as you're going around, you're gonna get a nice little rhythm uh, with these colors. I mean, isn't it kind of neat how this works? All right, so I'm at the end of my round. Not only is this the end of my round as far as uh, the end of an increase round, but this next round I will just be knitting, but I'm also going to be changing my color sequence. So I'm not changing my color sequence in my thumb gusset. I keep that the same, but my color sequence out here is going to change. And I know it's probably a little bit difficult to see right now because my colors, they happen to be really close together right, right now at this point in the striping, but trust me, the, the colors are different there. So this time, instead of starting with my color B here in these first two stitches, I start with my color A. And so this is really going to be tricky because now I have floats going really far, right? Because I have two stitches here, then I have all of these stitches. So I have those two stitches, I'll slip my marker, I'll go ahead and I'll knit one, and now I'm going to tuck in because I have all of these stitches. Now here's a question. How many stitches do I have there? I have five. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm actually going to undo and I'm going to tuck in sooner than what I had planned. So right here I have three because so I have one, two, and three, right? Two from the first needle or from that needle and one from this one. Before I knit this one here, I'm going to tuck. So I yarn over Make sure your float is not super far. Yarn over with the second color, unwind or unyarn over with your first color, and then finish. All right, so you still have to make sure that float is not like super snug as you weave in. But now the color is a little bit in a better place. Now I can continue on. So that would be one and two and three. And so I'm gonna weave in here again. So I yarn over with B, yarn over with A, unwind or unyarn over with B and finish knitting. And I will get across these three stitches, slip my marker, and conveniently my B is right there, ready to go. So you can see on the back, instead of having my yarn float from all the way over here to all the way over here, I tucked in my floats as I went and it looks nice and consistent there okay so I would carry on here making sure I'm using the right colors did I use that right oh I don't want to use B there I need to use I need to tuck in again so I'm going in here because I need to use a again so I'm yarning over back I'll tuck in and I'll tuck in 
button and now I'm ready to go back. So there we go. So that's even further. So I had to bring my color B all the way from over there to over here. And so by weaving in those floats as you go, it makes it so much nicer. We don't have some really long, crazy float working across. You see that? Okay. So let's take a peek here. You can see the inside of my work, but that's, that's how that works. So there's a whole lot of color A happening there on that one little section. But now you just carry on, right? You just carry on. And remember that you're changing the color sequence. Don't be, don't be like me and accidentally almost mess up. Um, unless you wanted to have stripes, that could be a look. That could be something you do if you want. Um, the the general construction of this mitten is pretty simple. Like you could slap in here, honestly, any sort of a stitch color way you want, um, as long as you're following the basic construction. You you absolutely got this okay so i am just going to make sure my floats are not too tight as i'm going across this is where this is where they want to start to pucker if you're not careful you can really start to see but yeah this is it all right okay so let's talk a little bit about the rest of the thumb gusset and your homework so as you continue on with the pattern working the thumb gusset stitches you will continue on through row 11 which will get you up to um, uh, 12 stitches between your markers okay so you're gonna have 12 stitches between your markers don't forget to always tuck in those floats as you go okay once you get 12 stitches along your marker it's on row 11 that we're going to take the center 10 of your gusset stitches and we're going to place them on a holder so all that literally means you guys is take a tapestry needle and yarn and slip those stitches onto a, a scrap yarn and just hold them aside don't do anything else with them just hold them aside so what you essentially will do on row 11 so let's talk through this it says to knit three stitches well here's what we're gonna do I'm gonna I'm gonna put it into Marley language for you work in your pattern across the first two stitches take your marker out and then knit one stitch on the other side of your marker then take your tapestry needle and the thread of yarn and place the next 10 stitches onto that thread of yarn okay <coughs> excuse me place those 10 stitches onto a thread of yarn then you'll knit this next stitch okay so now all of a sudden you, between those markers you now only have those two stitches how many stitches did we start off with when we started the gusset two stitches so now we are back to our original stitch count see how this is working out so You'll knit that one stitch, you can remove this marker, and then you'll just carry on in your stitch pattern around. It's at that point you're back to working in the round with your original stitch count down here, and all of these extra stitches we made right here in the thumb gusset are just on a holder set aside so that way we can make an actual thumb later on. So see, this really isn't super scary. The hardest part, I think, is maintaining control of those floats. Um, I will let you know that if you are having a lot of trouble with the fair aisle portion, if you wanted to make this just in plain stockinette without color changes, you could absolutely do that. Just make the, make the pattern and instead of changing colors, just make it all in one color. Like that is a possibility. Um, but as far as the thumb gusset itself, just remember every other round you're increasing on the the point of your marker so if you're coming this way it will be the one stitch inside the marker and one stitch before the second marker you work that knit front and back and you get up to where you have 12 stitches between these markers and it's on row 11 that we will take the center 10 stitches and put them on a holder leaving you with the two original stitches that you had and then we carry on. So that is your homework to get through row 11 of this mitten. In the next video, I show you how to finish off this hand warmer, whether you're making a fingerless mitt, a mitten, or a convertible mitten, so you don't wanna miss out on that. Uh, hopefully you're having a good time with this. Take your time, enjoy this process. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. I have a great 
fantastic, amazing group over on Facebook called the Marley's Minions. You're welcome to come over there and ask some questions. There's also a Marley's Knit Along group. You could join in and ask questions there or simply say hello in the video comments right below this video. I'm having such a great time teaching you everything about these mittens. I hope you're having a great time as well. I'll talk to you soon. I am Marley Bird and this is the Marley Bird YouTube channel. Don't forget to hit subscribe and smash that like button, everybody. Bye.